more than the four big cities in the U.S., L.A., New York, Chicago, and... Well, you got L.A., New York, Chicago, and I mean, I mean, San Francisco's in there as well. Toronto has more cranes than all those four cities combined. And I think it's number two in the world. I think only Singapore actually has more cranes in, in like right across the world. So go, going back to the question, we get this all the time is who's going to buy all these condos? And we answer always the same way. It's it re the real question is who's bought these condos already? You know, the, 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 someone has had to buy 80% of this building for the builder to even start construction. They won't get the construction financing from the lender. Now, there are some exceptions, though. It, talk about that. So Daniels, yeah. for example. Daniels, well, this project in Brampton, MPV. If you've driven by the site, you'll see that the, it's already under construction. How does that happen? Well, Daniels has deep pockets. So they don't well, they've been doing it for a while, right? They, they have. They have a long, long track record of, 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 of building around the GTA. And they don't need the buyer's deposits to approach lenders to get financing for construction. They don't, they simply just don't need it. Well, hang on one second, because I don't want to let the cat out of the bag out too much today sure. yet for our viewers, because I do want to make sure that they know where they're going and out, we're going to let them know where they can go in terms of getting all the collateral, getting the floor plans, the prices, the brochure, the incentives. But before we even let any of that, uh, uh, that, that cat out of the bag, I want to talk about what we do part of our due diligence, okay? Meaning, First and foremost, we've all heard location, 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 the old adage that it all comes down to location. And it is true, right? Number one, because, because especially as an investor, that's where the tenants are going to be living, okay? And so we want to, as an investor, attract as many tenants, which are our customers, to our product to our store, which just sure. happens to be a property. It's either a home, a townhome or a condo. Now, what else? And let's talk about this a little bit, right? Like when we're talking, when we're looking at location, Anthony, what is it that you're considering? Well, I mean, like I said, I mean, there's, there's more cranes in the sky than there are in four other major cities in, the, in North America. So our, my investors call me all the time and they say, Anthony, you know, how do I decide which condo to buy in? Where is my down payment going to grow at the, the, the fastest and the strongest over the course of construction. And we always go to our formula we, and, and, you know, location is very important. So what do we look for in a location? Well, it's proximity to transit. It's whether it's part of a growing community. So will there be more development happening in that area? Amenities around there. Is there employment options for them? And usually that comes with Proximity to transit makes it easy to get around. Right. You know, uh, Toronto has a very, very hard time getting people to work on time. You know? <laughs> Why is that? Well, have you seen the 427? <laughs> have you seen the 404? They extended the 427, which I'm happy about. But yes, yeah, finally. But there's still 100%. Right? Between 4 and 6 p.m., between 7 it. and 9 p.m. I actually think it's probably closer to like 3 to 7 p.m. now, right? How like many it, people would rather be sitting on a go train? I know. On their way to work, for finishing sure. that that report or so reading true. that book or finishing their exam, like their their homework, you know. So, proximity to transit will attract tenants, you know. So that's what we look for. We look for those three things: proximity to transit, part of a master plan community, and is there employment around there? Is there is there amenities or employment? Can people get to work? When when those three boxes are checked off. We usually take a closer look at the at the investment. And now I want to talk a little bit more even about transit, right? Because there was a report done uh, uh, by Harvard uh, going back to about 2017, 2016, where what the, what they looked at was actually world real estate to see what has happened to values as well as what happened to what actually happened to rental rates. OK, when you were close to transit sure. and if you were under a 500 meter radius, you saw the biggest increase in actual real estate values, along with what uh, uh, rents increasing over time. So the importance of always investing by transit is as uh, is of the utmost importance. Your other points about employment and, and amenities and population growth, that generally happens because of the transit. Sure. Now, when we're looking at it from an investor's perspective, okay, I want to talk about some important incentives that the investor always, in our opinion, needs to have in place. So let's touch on that a little bit. Let's talk about 
always understanding that how the the pricing works from a builder's perspective. Contrary to a to, to, to what a lot of people think that the builder wants a sellout of a condo project when there's 352 units, 167 units, that they want to sell it out in one day. They don't want to no. because it doesn't work for their performa. So let's talk about some of the price increases that happens because I want to make sure everybody who's watching right now live and the recording understands that, that the builder is going to allocate units and every time they allocate units, the batches the, in, in the allocations that they do, they're going to increase the pricing. But let's talk about how much and how they actually do that allocation process. Sure. Yeah. I mean, look, th in, in this particular case, Daniels is a developer that has a system just like every other developer. They give access to the building to agents who have performed well for them at other developments that they've sold. So Daniels has had a number of releases this year. Uh, Thornhill, uh, Kindred, uh, there was a release at, in Regent Park. If an agent in 2021 sold multiple units, uh, like more than 10 units over those three projects, they were invited to the MPV in Brampton. There's only 140 suites here. Yep. They're not going to feed everybody. They can't feed everybody. They've got to have a system to control the chaos. Daniels was bragging that they've received over 5,000 registrations. Just for the 140 units. Just for the 140 so I didn't know that was the last update. I know we were talking earlier today. Um, and, and so I didn't know that that was the last update, which essentially means that they sold this thing 50 times over. So in this release, I, I've sent out an email to those of you on this, uh, this, this uh, webinar. If you can see this, this is in the email I sent you. This is the site plan. You've got a condo townhouse block here. You've got a condo townhouse block here. And you've got a six-story mid-rise condominium here. So if you've noticed the price list that I sent you, the floors available are only from one till five. Well, what happened to that sixth floor? The developer is holding on to that sixth floor so that he can raise prices. And so what it, well, let's let, let's take a step back for a second, sure. right? Because in our in, in in the eight years that we've been doing this, in the eight years that we've been doing this, we've done a little over 2,000 units. Yeah. Okay. Collectively, myself, yourself, um, our whole team of 51 realtors as well. And one thing that we noticed is, is that we, we've, you know, and I wasn't telling people to impress anybody by any means. It's more to impress upon people where all this data is coming from. Sure. Okay. We obviously understand where investors have hit their head against the wall. We want to make sure everybody watching right now doesn't do the same. What has actually happened in, in from first allocation to second allocation? There's a price jump. But in generally speaking, what do you what do you, what do we experience? Well, we experience that uh, some people will be lucky and they'll get into the first round. Any pre-construction contract in Ontario that you sign, you're always given a 10-day cooling period. Some people may have bit off more than they can chew. Some people will return their units during those 10 days. Believe me, the developer is ecstatic about that. He's very happy to have units returned when he's released a set number of units and he has 4,800 other people who are ready to buy. You know, they, they, they realize they missed the first opportunity and they don't want to miss the second. So they'll jump in on the second round, even with a price increase, because they understand that this is an this is a 20 acre site, Jazz. Right. This is the first release of a 20 acre site. And Daniels is notorious for buying land early and sitting on it. And so how many more are coming actually in total? We we don't know. So for this release, yes, we know that there's 140 units released, right? But the sixth floor is being held on to. Okay. So the sixth floor is going to be released at a later date. They haven't told us when. They're very tight lipped about this. Right. You know, the, the developer is not going to come to us and tell them, tell us their whole plan. But yeah. we do know that it is a six story building. They've only released five floors. And the sixth floor is being held on to to probably be re released with some units that come back during the 10 day cooling period. Okay. So I just want to make sure that anybody who's coming on maybe a little bit late, sometimes there's technical difficulties with video and audio. It's the times that we live right now. For anybody who's just coming on, myself, Jazz Takar, and Anthony Tabar are talking about how you actually can win in investing into pre construction condos, the incentives that you need 
to make sure that this is the right investment for you. We just spoke about price increases and making sure that you as an investor only purchase in the first access at pricing. In fact, me personally, this is the only this is the only strategy that I really employ or deploy, not to say that it's the best one, but it works the best for me. And we're going to talk about some of the reasons why. Sure. Okay. But if you're not buying in first access, you're almost defeating the purpose. Now, if you're going to be living in the condo or the home, the townhome or the, 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 the semi-detached, detached home, no problem because you're an end user, you're going to be living in there. You pay in a little, you, you pay an extra 30, $40,000 amortized over 25, 30 years. It's not a big deal, but as an investor, this is about numbers. You don't, you want to try to make sure that you don't get too emotionally involved on how the kitchen looks and the flooring right. looks because most tenants don't pay for that kind of stuff. So as an investor, we got to put on a separate set of glasses and we got to look at it from a different perspective. So we touched on the first access. Yeah. Very, very important that you got to buy in first access. Right. Now let's talk about some of the other incentives that we as investors have to have in place. Let's talk about the importance of the right to assign. What does an assignment mean? How do people take advantage of it, Anthony? Well, Jazz, um, I've been on the phone for the last two weeks. Yeah. Prices. We've been on the phone for 14, 15 years as well. But Let's not forget that. Specifically about yeah. this project Got because it. they finally gave us the date. They okay. Got, they, they told us two weeks ago, guys, get your people ready. On October 13th, yeah. pricing and plans is going to be released. I have been preparing people for an average in the building of $900 to $1,000 a square foot. Jazz, when I saw the prices this morning, when I went to Daniel's sales center and picked up the price list, there is not one unit here that's over $1,000 a square foot. Okay. The pricing is much better than I had expected. Okay. Now, that being said, with 5,000 registrants, you know, those who don't get in in the first round or those who return their units after they get them, I mean, I've worked projects where I've seen the prices go up in two months, $100,000. I can show you real proof. Like I have these prices. I save the prices so that I can show investors who I'm meeting for the first time how important first access is. And I didn't mean to cut you off because I know, again, people are coming on a little bit late. It's okay. We said seven o'clock. We started exactly at seven o'clock. People came on a little late. There's nothing wrong with that. I want to make sure if you have questions to get some of these uh, 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 prices and, and, and sample prices, not only of the project that we're going to be speaking about today, but to get the examples that Anthony's talking about at any time, just make sure you send an email. And especially if you have a question right now, just send a quick email to Anthony at Anthony Tabar. Com. Nikki, do me a favor and big shout out to Nikki behind the ones and twos who make sure that he's setting everything up for us and everything's running smoothly. So if the audio is not working or the video is not working well and we're a little choppy, we know who to blame. And that's going to be Nikki. Make sure, Nikki, you do me a favor and put in the email address, Anthony at Anthony Tar in case you have any questions. Continue, brother. You were talking about the 5,000 people that are registered, our people that are watching right now. You're very safe. You're very, very safe. You're going to have access. You're going to have the ability to initiate a deal. If this one's right for you, awesome. And if this one's not right for you, that's okay as well. Our job is to get you ready and prepared for the next one. Make sure that you're educated and you're informed so you can make a quality decision yourself. Well, um, like I said, the pricing came out a lot better than we expected. We're seeing one bedroom and dens like as low as 516,000, one bedroom and dens. Now, one huge factor of why the market has shifted to pre-construction is if anybody's been paying attention to the resale market these days, you have to fight for a property. You know, it's called multiple. Like you go into multiple offers. Multiple offers. Yeah. You're fighting for properties. So instead of investors fighting for properties, they're looking at pre-construction condos as an option. They're going to park their deposit over the construction period. And in, while the people are fighting for this existing properties, developers keep raising prices. You know, so they use leverage by putting down their down payment, usually 15 or 20 percent down. And over the course of construction, sometimes it's two, three or four years. This property is going up by 100, 200, 300 dollars a square foot. This is how investors make their money in pre-construction. Now, when a project comes around with a five percent deposit structure in the GTA, where 1.2 million people are expected to be immigrating here over the next three years. 
especially that getting to work on time has been such a difficult thing, property near transit is becoming so much more attractive. You know, we're just getting comments here. They they love your voice. They're saying that they love the sound of your voice, but they're just having a little hard time hearing. Oh, okay. It. So you obviously have a face for a podcast. Okay. And radio. okay, okay. So they love your <laughs> voice. They just say, we just need you to sit a little closer Got it. and make sure that you're sitting closer. Now, you know, because you and I, I mean, I'm sure the viewers can tell, we definitely like the sound of our own voice sometimes because, you know, we like to go off and sometimes we go off on tangents. I need to bring you back for a second because I really want to make sure that I know there's somebody watching right now. And maybe the guy's name is John. I don't know. But somebody's probably watching and saying, you know what? What the heck is an assignment? How does, like, why do I need this, this right to assign thing? So because it, we won't let our clients get into contracts without that. I think it's it, it's that important. Sure. There might be a fee associated with a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks. I mean, at the end of the day, once you see the amount of profits and the and and you actually take advantage of the assignment, then the thousand, two thousand dollar fees, three thousand dollar fees are not that big of a deal. Talk about how it actually works, though. Sure. So I mean, you're going to be putting down five percent here. So, I mean, the most expensive unit in this building is not even 800,000, but okay. so for easy math, let's sure. use 800,000, 5% yep. of 800,000 is 40,000. You're going to tie up an $800,000 property with $40,000 for the next two years. Now, do you have any idea what the appreciation was in Brampton last year? I'm going to venture to say, um, because that's where my paisans live. Okay. I live there as well. I know you do. Okay. Um, so I know it quite well. I'm going to venture to say about 18%. Okay. Let, let's cut that in half. Exactly. Let's cut that in half yeah. and say 10%. Right. 10%. If the property goes up at 10% next year, you've just doubled your money. Well, explain that. Because it, it, like, you know, when, when people hear that, okay. it sounds like, you know, you're making up a bunch of numbers here, right? What's, so let, let's go through that again. Okay. I, I so I'm as an investor, I'm going to put down forty thousand dollars because right. it's five percent. Right. Okay. I bought this eight hundred thousand dollar property Correct. and it went up ten percent. Ten percent. Eighty thousand dollars. Ten percent of eight hundred. I was usually I was always good at math. Got it. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, so I've doubled my money in a year. In a year. Okay. That's a two hundred percent return. Yes. In a year. Yeah. Look, Bitcoin's been great for right. people. Right. But so is pre-construction condos. Yes. You know, now year two comes around. Let's say we get another 10%. That's another $80,000. You've now quadrupled your money in, in, in only two years. Now, assignments, basically you sign the agreement of purchase and sale. You do not have the keys yet, but somebody, one of these 1.2 million people who are going to be moving here over the next three years needs to live in Brampton. They need to live next to a go station. They need a two bedroom townhouse. The value of this townhouse is now $960,000. It's gone up 10% twice in two years, 160,000. It's 960,000. You say, you know what? I've, I've quadrupled my money, but I'm okay with tripling my money. Right. Why don't I sell it for $120,000 more than I paid for 920, you know, because you got to understand that there's probably some other investors in there who are going to be putting their property on the market as well. So if you all go on the market for 960, you know, why not look a little bit more attractive, drop your price a little bit and sell it for $120,000 more than you. You just tripled your money. Pay the tax man, pay yep. your realtor. Yep. And do it again. Now, as long as you have that clause in writing, which we're going to make sure that that's in place for our clients. And I, yeah, we've done that. I've, I've definitely asked about it. Right. And assignment is available at this development. Right. It's going to be a $5,000 fee because right. the developer knows what he's sitting on. Yep. Plus administration costs. Right. And that, that's what, that's usually the thousand bucks, yeah. legal yeah. fees yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. when we're talking about $160,000, $180,000, I mean, that's just the cost of doing business when you're talking, you know, the five, $6,000 fees. Uh, what I actually want people to think about is let's just say both Anthony and I were off with the numbers at 10% year over year. And let's cut that in half. Being of Indian descent, my mother... <laughs> negotiated over apples back home and I'm ultra conservative, also the son of a taxi driver and a factory worker. And so I like to be ultra, ultra conservative. Sure. And so let's go 5%. 
Now you use the 200% return, right? The 80,000 on the 40,000. Yeah. If it just went up, if it just goes up by 5%, if you take a 40 year average in the GTA, like that's a big sample size. 40 now, years, right? 40 years. You're looking at about a seven and a half percent year over year increase. Sure. So by us saying 5%, you know, and, and not using the 10%, not using the 18 that I mentioned as well, right? Because you could call those outliers anomalies in the marketplace. I mean, the pandemic, who knows like how that got there. Like it, it might be a little too frothy for my liking anyways. Yeah. And so forget the 10, go ultra conservative, 40 years. 7.2%, 7.3% year over year. We're going to use 5%. Now you're at 100% return on your money. Now you might not be at the 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 $200,000 increase that you were originally talking about, but what if you made $100,000? And we were off. I don't think you're going to be that upset, right? Using those numbers. We know that the numbers are a lot higher, but I would I always like to paint that picture to investors as well. Sure. Not to think that it's all that rosy, right. that at times there's dips, right? And we say this all the time. The coolest thing with real estate is that real estate values go up and down upwards. Right. Now, if that scares you, if that scares you as an investor, that the values go up and down, the GTA, no, we know what kind of rates. It's, it's almost like playing goalie in hockey and being afraid of the puck. You probably shouldn't be a goalie. No. You probably shouldn't think about investing if the values, if you're scared about the values going right. up and up. It's yeah. just understanding that over time, the values are always going to increase as long as you invest in an area where the where, where it's close to transit and you know tenants are going to be. Great job covering the assignment so you can sell this. You're literally going to take the agreement of purchase and sale that you have, and you're going to sell it to another investor for profit. You don't have to close on it. Or an end user, yeah. Or an end user, obviously. You don't, you don't have to close on it. You don't have to pay, you don't have to pay all the closing costs. You don't have to get the mortgage. You don't have to worry about any of that. Hence why it's a massive advantage to have the right to lease. I, I apologize, the right to assign. Right. Can we talk a little bit about Anthony? Because again, there's somebody who's watching this right now, live or the recording, and saying, okay. What 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 happens during closing with these condos? Great. Um, is there occupancy and registration? Yeah. Um, what are all these? I really want to spend the next two, three minutes. And then I promise everyone we're going to let you know where you can go to today, right after we finish. You're going to be able to go to the website, get all the information, the 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 floor plans, the pricing the brochure, all the incentives we spoke about, and the most important part, a reservation form where you're going to be able to put in your name, contact info, driver's license, and actually reserve a unit tonight. And Anthony and the rest of our team will make sure that we reach out to you. Let's talk about the difference between occupancy and registration. Sure. So you can imagine that in pre-construction, whenever you're buying something pre-construction, there's always two closing dates. There's the day you get your keys. And then there's the day where your, your mortgage starts. The day you get your keys, you have to understand this is a six-story condominium and it's a townhome. They can't possibly move everybody in on the same day. The, the, the elevators would be tied up. There would be moving trucks all over the place. It would be chaos on Beauvert. <laughs> <laughs> so this works the same way in any condominium that you buy, from a six-story condominium to an 80-story condominium downtown Toronto. The developer chooses... From the bottom, units 101, 102, 103, 104, he says, okay, in fall of 2023, let's call it November 1st, 2023, you four people are moving in. You guys get your keys and you guys can start living in my condominium. November 2nd, units 105, 106, 107, 108, and so on and so forth until everybody in the building has been moved in. Once everybody in the building has moved in, the developer emails, calls, or texts everybody saying, okay, guys, Everybody's moved in. The city's approved the building. Get your financing and your closing costs ready. Now, while that first person who moved into Unit 101 is living there, waiting for the rest of the people to move in, he's using the electricity in the building. He's, he's occupying the property, so he needs to pay property taxes. There's an occupancy fee attached to this unit, an occupancy fee. So it's almost like rent. None of this money goes towards your mortgage. Now, technically, legally, occupancy can be two years. Terion says that occupancy can last two years. Now, 
nobody wants to be sitting in occupancy for two years. Including the builder. Including the builder. Now, I, I can explain to you why occupancy is actually not bad for investors, but that's a whole other webinar that no, we'll get no, into. No, no, you know what? Why don't you touch on that for two minutes? Because I think that's very important. And the reason I think that's very important, Anthony, is because a lot of people think that the builder wants to be in occupancy. They don't want to close. They got all their money tied up. Right. They want to get out of there as fast as you want to get in there sure. from an investor's perspective or an end user's perspective, right? And so I actually agree with you when it comes to that occupancy could be used as a very, very good advantage and a, and a massive benefit from an investor's perspective. It's, it's, more lucra- it's more lucrative. Why? Because your occupancy fees will always, now provided it's an 80-20 mortgage, providing you're borrowing 80%, your occupancy fees will always, not 100% of the time, be less than your carrying costs. Your occupancy fees consist of three things. It's your proportionate share of property taxes, which don't change when you're an owner. Your proportionate share of maintenance fees, which don't change when you're an owner. And it's the balance that you owe the developer, the interest portion on that amount, the interest portion. So you're not paying your principal amount. So on a $600,000 condo at 80-20, if you owe the developer 80%, which here it's 95%, you'll Mm -hmm. owe the developer, we see that there's probably about a $1,000 difference. So for the amount amount of time that you are an investor and you've, you've put a tenant in place from day one of occupancy, you'll actually be making $1,000 more than you would during while when you own it. Now, don't get used to that because once you start owning it, you're going to have to get the mortgage. You're going to start and, paying principal. Start, yeah. And now on average, in our experience, I think it's safe to say that occupancy time is generally six to month, six to eight months. I mean, I think that's what I've experienced. I mean, so Terry on is the is, is the, the government body that regulates builders and they gave builders the two year span. Now, how you mitigate risks are buying from reputable developers, reputable developers like Daniels who have a track record and experience in moving people into buildings. Well, you must have the script of what we're going to be speaking about today, because I was actually just going to go into the importance, because now we touched on the location. We touched on the incentives. The last piece that, in my opinion, that's left that we need to speak about is making sure that you, who's the builder? Yeah. Are, is this their first time at the rodeo? Are we as investors, we, all of us, because first and private, like, private, like we are real estate brokers. We're not hiding that. However, Before we're real estate brokers, we're investors first and foremost. We're looking at this always from an investment's perspective, investor's perspective. Who is the builder? Are we going to be used as a guinea pig here? We got to make sure that they're reputable. Let loose who Daniels is. Like this is, I mean, Google Daniels, guys. (laughs) If if you (laughs) you haven't yet. If you haven't um, heard of Daniels. But they're top two, top three, um, you know. They've right got, now, Daniels, you got you got a couple there going back and forth, always winning the awards and all that kind of stuff. But talk a little bit about Daniels. Yeah, they have a very big land bank. They've they've got sites for the next fifty years that they're going to be selling. They do not want to piss off their investors. Excuse my language. They don't want to piss them it's your off. Webinar, you're allowed to say whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, no, I just you know I don't want to you know I, I don't I'm getting passionate. About <laughs> yeah, it. I can tell. You know? I love it. So <laughs> yeah, no, Daniels. Like I said, I mentioned those eighty story skyscrapers downtown. Daniels has moved. 80 stories of people into their buildings. This is a six story condominium guys. I would be surprised if it's even two months yep. of occupancy. I don't want to over promise and under deliver. That's what I say on average. I think it's safe to say is the six, six months, to eight right? months. Yeah. If you yeah. plan for that, I don't yeah. think you're going to be out of pocket nope. and you're nope. actually, if you do rent the place, if you're buying it to move in, just prepare yourself for those six to eight months of rent that you're going to be paying. But I think a lot of the people I've spoken to over the past two weeks are investors because they recognize that this is a good opportunity. And unfortunately, end users just can't move as fast. Yep. You know, they've they've got to ask their uncle. They've got to ask their barber. They've got to ask their butcher. Yeah. You know? Yeah, especially as a first time home buyer. Right. Um, they got the, the, there's a lot more that they want to do in terms of due diligence. I think as an investor and actually as a first time home buyer, what what. Pre-construction investing allows you to do, and there's a reason there's a massive sign behind my head that says ready, fire, aim, because it's a reminder that us as investors, especially with this type of strategy, you can fire, pull the trigger first, and actually initiate a deal. And in Ontario, you automatically, 
automatically get a 10 day due diligence period slash 10 day cooling period. It's not even, it doesn't need to be written in the contract. It's automatic. That's what I mean by the aim part of the sign in my, above my head, because now you can make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, which will make the introduction for the lawyers for you. If you don't have a real estate lawyer, make sure that everything is checked off. All the incentives that that were promised to you by myself, Anthony, and the rest of the team, you also have, make sure that, that this is the right investment. For any reason, you can pull out. But if you never pull the actual trigger and initiate a deal by going to where we're going to tell you to go to and put in a reservation form, you'll never have the opportunity. We're on the resale market, we touched on this earlier, especially in today's market at the time of this recording, you know, we're at the end of fall 2021. I mean, we're in a, we're, we're in a resale market where there's a lot more demand than there is supply. And that's why values keep going up. But as a buyer, as a purchaser, as an investor, you really don't have a lot of time because you're putting in offers without any conditions. Why? Because if I put as a buyer, a condition in my offer in the resale market, but Anthony doesn't, he's going to end up winning out. Well, in the pre-construction world, it works completely different. You actually get to tie up the property and then make sure everything checks off. We talked about the incentives. We spoke about the builder. We spoke about the location, but there's one major part we left out about this specific location, corner of Bavard and Credit View. Google it, street map it. Do, you know, what is it called? Google Street nowadays. Um, go check out where this is because it's, how close to the Go Transit? It's right across the street. Right across the street of Go Transit. You are almost, and you will, if you check back to any of our pieces of content, anything that we've ever done, you'll come to realize that we don't guarantee anything. We don't guarantee. That's not how we speak. That's not how we sell. However, if you are purchasing an investment, literally the across, like you can throw a stone and you're going to hit the Go Train station. Okay. You're almost guaranteeing yourself a win. Is it going to be? 7.2% year over year or 10% year over year, I can tell you it's going to be somewhere in between there because, again, we have a lot of people coming into the country. We have actually into the GTA 250,000 people year over year for the next 10 years coming into the greater Toronto area, and that's where they want to live, rent, and play. The best way to predict what's going to happen is to see what has happened and all yeah. of the criteria that's got us to where we are today is still happening. Our interest rates keep going down. Our, our our population keeps growing going up and it's just so difficult for developers to go through the zoning process with the cities you know and, and it's the cities that are really creating this problem but that's a whole other webinar now, Guys, that is a whole different webinar yeah. for sure because we can go on and on about the red tape and how long it takes it takes approximately 10 years for an application to go from from the start of an application to for a shovel to go in the ground like i mean in manhattan does that stuff in two and a half years right and that's what happening in gta we promised everybody that we're going to stick to 30 minutes. We went to 36 minutes so far. You I just got more to add. I just want to, yeah, I just want to touch on a few things. So I don't know. Most people who are on this webinar right now have received my email. They've seen the pricing and floor plans. I don't know if they've seen that this, uh, is that, that, can that, you guys that, see that? that should be in the portal. Can you guys see that? Yeah. So parking is available for all suites, 500 square feet and f square f parking is available for all units, 500 square feet and larger. The price, there's a combo for parking and locker for $24,800. It's really important that I discuss the closing costs. Daniels is one of the best developers when it comes to their development charges. The development charges are super low here, guys. The one bedrooms are capped at $7,500. And the two bedrooms and two bedroom and dens are capped at $10,000. Now, one thing I love about Daniels is that they, they're very clear about what those caps cover. If you were buying from another developer, and you may have before, if you're an investor who's bought pre-construction condos before, but not from Daniels, you would have seen this incentive that we failed to talk about. We forgot to mention the cap development charges. Lucky. Definitely, that's a very important incentive. Almost all developers do this now, but it's really important to read the fine print because Daniels has a list of things which I can't seem to find right now, but it's all on the, on, on the portal. Yep in terms of what they cover in their closing costs. There's so many miscellaneous charges, i.e. utility hookups. Yeah. Um, park development charges. Park you development see. You see charges. art deco charges. Sometimes. Law society fees. The, sure. You know, there's <laughs> like about 10 of them yeah. that they're very, very clear and open. And they have this 
slogan they use is no hidden costs. Yeah. So it's it, it's another reason why those 65, 70 projects that land on my desk, I'll I'll normally say yes to Daniel's project because there's no surprises on closing. And I don't like surprises when I'm buying a pair of shoes, yep. let alone a condo where I'm spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. I like to know what I'm going to be spending. I don't want to buy blindly. And that's why I love that in Ontario, you get this 10-day due diligence period. Right. right? And to make sure that there is no surprises. Right. All you got to do is go to anthonytabar.com. Com. That's A N T H O N Y T A B A R dot com. Nikki, do me a favor, just put in that website. Make sure to click that right now because not only will you have access to all the floor plans, the price list, the development charges, the incentives, you'll have access, full access to f- actually put in a reservation form, which is time stamped. So the quicker you do it, the better for you because you are going to get a call from the team first once we get the the units. And at that time, you can make a decision if this is the right one for you. I strongly recommend to tie it up. It's why I went through that whole spiel and that whole uh, 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 soliloquy, so to speak, on tying up property and then doing the due, dil- due diligence after. If it doesn't work out, that's not a problem. We can always find out what you're looking for and get you a little bit more information, a different property, a different type of investment. That's what the team here actually does. Anthony, what do you want to leave the viewers of the webinar today with, my man? Do we have uh, Do we have time to talk about HST? Well, yeah, definitely we have yeah. time. Look and 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 understand if you're watching right now, as you could tell, we went over this quite quickly. But at any time after going to anthonytabar.com, you can also send an email to anthony at anthonytabar.com and get any of your questions answered. But let's touch on HSD, buddy. So yeah, look, like I said, I don't want anyone buying blindly. I, I always try to talk about the three closing costs that you should prepare for. And closing costs are paid after occupancy. We talked about occupancy, we talked about the day we got our keys. Now I'm going to talk about the day where you your mortgage starts and your closing costs are due. So we talked about development charges. The other one is land transfer tax. That exists on resale property as well. There's nothing we can do about it. Thankfully, this project is in Peel and not in Toronto. So you're only going to be paying one of the taxes. It's the provincial tax. That's okay. Um, and the last one can, can be avoided. I, w- I, want to, I want to stress that the last closing cost can be avoided. Now, HST is owed on any pre-construction unit that's, per, that's sold in, in Ontario. The price that you're seeing on the price lists today include a portion of HST. Let's just call it 5%. 5% of HST is already built into the price. Now, the 8% that's not built into the price is always capped at $24,000 always capped. So whether you're buying a $500,000 unit or you're buying a $767,000 unit, your clo- your H- the HST owed on your unit is always $24,000. Now, how can you avoid it? If you're an investor and you plan on renting this unit out, the developer says, you know, you have money to buy a second property. The onus is on you to pay the $24,000 and you can apply for a rebate and get it back. So one thing I failed to mention, that 5% that's built into the purchase price, that's called the non-rebatable portion of HST. The non-rebatable portion of HST. Can you guess what the 24000 is called? The rebatable portion of HST. <laughs> so it's fully rebatable, meaning you get it back. Whoever pays it gets it back. Now, who pays it depends on who moves into the unit. So like I said, if you're an investor buying this with the intentions of renting it out, the developer says, you pay the $24,000 and you go do the dirty work and you apply for the rebate and you get it back. If you're buying this for a kid, for your, one of your kids or for yourself to move into, or if you're buying this as an investor and you have a cousin or an uncle or a brother that can move into this unit for you, me- meaning an arm's length relationship from you, the developer pays that $24,000 and then he applies for a rebate and he asks for it back. 
So, does, does that make sense, Jazz? Yeah, it definitely does. What I like to do is 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 kind of explain it because I think most of the people that are going to be watching right now, and we do have some uh, Q and A's, and and, okay. and so we'll definitely get to that. And okay. what you it did make sense, but I think most people are investors. And what I always tell them is this: you're going to pay the twenty four thousand yeah. dollars. You're going to rent this out. Yeah. Let's get the one year lease agreement. Sure, we'll put you in touch with a company that does all the paperwork for you. Okay, you pay the twenty four thousand. They do all the paperwork for you. You pay them about 600 bucks. It's fully, fully turnkey. You don't even think about it. Just pay the, it's a, it's an HSP, HST rebate specialist mm-hmm. who does all the paperwork for you in six to eight weeks. You get the $24,000 yeah, like- and it's actually not the full 24,000 you get back. You get back 24,300 and change. The CRA always likes to take their min fees here and there, but you get it all back as long as you rent it out for the year. Correct. And if you sold it before an assignment, that's on the new person that purchased it. You don't need to worry about that if you took advantage of the assignment. Does that make sense? Correct. Right? So as an investor, understand that it's fully turnkey. The whole team here is going to take care of it. We'll make the introductions for you. You have nothing to worry about when it comes to HST. Just be prepared to have the $24,000 to pay it at closing, but you'll get it back within six to eight weeks. And that's always a nice surprise I like to get because well, I kind of forget about it sometimes. I mean, if you've invested before, you know about this, but if this is your first time investing, I, I, I we don't want any surprises on closing. So this is why I like talking about this stuff well before we sign so that you're fully aware of what you're getting yourself into. I mean, Jazz, we have investors who buy four units in a building. Unfortunately, you can't do this here. Is there a max on this one? Yeah, one per household. Okay. One per household. That sounds like, you know, I used to go to uh, a shopper's drug mart with my mom and you could only get like one toilet paper per person. And this was way before pre-COVID times. Come on. Yeah, like there was like a coupon my mom would have. It was like only one. So I used to go in one line and my mom used to go in another line. That's funny. Yeah, it's just how we used to do it. That must have been pre-Costco too. (laughs) It was pre-Costco too, for sure, buddy. So, so, um, So yeah, uh, if if you know if you, I, I just wanted to that for if you purchased before as an investor, you've done this before. You understand this. Before. We have investors who buy four units in the same condominium. They'll buy. They'll pay twenty four thousand, twenty four thousand, twenty four thousand, twenty four thousand. In six to eight weeks after closing, they get a check from the CRA for ninety six thousand. We go buy another condo. Yeah, I love that. I you love know? that. Look, now so, you got to be prepared, right? You got to make sure that you're prepared for that, and you actually get it. If you have not. Went to anthonytabar.com. I don't know why you haven't. You got to ask yourself that question because right now, if you go to anthonytabar.com, you can get all the information, including the floor plans, the pricing, Let- the brochures, and you'll have the reservation form in there where you can actually reserve the unit. The team is standing by to make sure that they get through any questions. If again, you have any questions, send a quick email to anthony at anthonytabar.com. We do have some questions actually in um, uh, uh, the Q&A section Great. of the webinar. Nikki, my boy, why don't you rip them out and 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 let us know what the questions are, brother? So the question was, what are the average prices, Anthony, for a one bedroom plus den and the average sizes? So the smallest unit in the building is a five hundred. Well, smallest one bedroom and den in the in in this building is a five hundred and seventy three square foot one bedroom and den. It starts at five hundred and sixteen thousand nine hundred. Um. It's a $2,000 floor premium. So this price I'm giving you is for the first floor. Then there's a jump on the second floor because I think they may have a terrace. And then the third floor would be 520, 900. Uh, I hope that answered your question. And then there's a one bedroom. No, there's no there's no one bedroom in dens in the townhomes. So the townhomes only have one bedroom, one bathroom, or two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and one powder room. And look, I mean, if you're looking, I mean, this is just my personal opinion, guys, as an investor, as a broker, as a resident of Brampton, I know the people who are going to be renting in here. And I also know the people who are going to be purchasing to live in there. I would strongly recommend that you look at a two bedroom. And the reason is, is because you got to imagine the psychology of the people who are going to be living in here. It's going to be one of two people. One is somebody who's going to be downsizing. And in this area of Brevard and Credit View, there is a lot of homes that average anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 square feet, but they're older. They're the baby boomers. They're going to start to downsize now. But if you try to get them into a one bedroom at 560 square feet, they're going to be looking like, what the heck is this? It's like a shoebox. They're not going to be able to move into that. So what are they going to do? They're going to be looking into a larger two bedroom because it's a little bit more spacious. You can imagine somebody going from a 2,500 square foot home to 
a 3,000, from a 3,000 square foot home down to 573 square feet. It just doesn't it make sense. And then you have the renters on the other side of the spectrum that are going to be somebody who has, a, they just got married, they have a kid, or they're, have a, they're, they're, they're about to have a kid. They envision themselves, tenants generally envision themselves in a place for two to three years. And so knowing that, Knowing that, be at the forefront of that as an investor. What do you always say about Wayne Gretzky, one of our favorite hockey players? Even though I'm a Sydney Crosby, Mary Lemieux fan, but what do you talk about Wayne Gretzky? What does he always say? Well, if you don't know who Wayne Gretzky is, he is the leading goal scorer in the history of the NHL. That's hockey. He, he, he played hockey. He scored the most goals in NHL history. And when they asked him, Wayne, how did you score so many goals? He says, well, you know, everybody kind of goes to where the puck is and I tend to go- know where the puck is going. And so with real estate here in this area, we know that there's going to be a lot of tenants wanting to get into a little bigger space, especially with what happened with the pandemic. They want to, you know, there's going to be a young couple, maybe if they don't even have a baby, not thinking about starting a family, but it's that second bedroom that they're going to be able to use as an office. Because, you know, look, I was at home during the pandemic and I think my wife hated the the the, the, the sound of my blinking. You know what I mean? And so she we, we needed a little bit more extra space, right? Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot of people out there that are in that boat as well. And so if, if, you can look at a two bedroom because remember, yes, the purchase price, it might be a difference of a hundred thousand dollars, but you as an investor are not paying the hundred thousand dollars. You're paying 20%. I know the deposit structure is 5%, but when you have to go get the mortgage, you're going to be looking as an investor. If it's your second property, 20%, yeah. it's only costing you $20,000 spread out over how, the, the occupancy for this again, sorry, um, 28 months, roughly. 28 months. So a little over two years. Yeah. So it's $20,000 over two years. Yeah. And so that's how you want to look at the investment is, 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 is okay. If the purchase price is, is a hundred thousand dollars difference, what does it actually cost me? What's the cash that I got to outlay in this situation? It would be $20,000. Nikki next Q and a buddy. So in terms of fees, if you're talking about the development charges, we did go over them. They're going to be all that information is in the investor portal at anthonytabar.com. Hopefully you already got it. And that was a question from earlier in terms of land transfer tax. Anthony, take that. Land transfer tax depends on the purchase price that we get. So um, whoever asked that question, Nikki, I don't know if you you can put my phone number in, in, in the chat. Yeah, you can put my phone number. You can send me a text and let me know what you're thinking of spending. And and uh, and I can answer that question. The so, nice thing with here is because you're in Brampton, you're north of Steeles, you're in the 905. You don't pay the double tax here, right? Which is um, only only for uh, Toronto. It's the welcome to Toronto tax, and, and but it, you still got to pay the welcome to Ontario tax. And you may be a first time buyer, so you're entitled to some kind of rebates that we can get into again if you want. Just send me a text. Uh, don't call me right now. I'm on a webinar. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> And so next What's question. The next question? <laughs> assignments. Yeah. So we touched on assignments, uh, uh, how assignments work. Essentially, um, at the end of the day, you as an investor or an end user, it's in our opinion, should be used um, as a security blanket. Security blanket meaning that you're purchasing something today that's going to be built in 28 months from now. We don't know what happens. Life happens. Pandemics happen. So many things happen. At least you have a security blanket that allows you to sell that paper to another purchaser, which are generally investors and end users. But in the last five years, myself included, Anthony included, and over 2,000 of our investors saw massive gains. They bought something for $500,000. And two years later, it was worth, two years later, it was worth $800,000, $750,000. Well, it's hard to give up that type of profit if somebody comes knocking on your door because of the lack of supply. If you can actually still sell that before closing, you might need to or you might want to. So having the clause of the right to assign, which we have it here. There is a $5,000 fee that the builder charges plus some, you know, $1,500 of administration costs. Again, when you're talking about a $250,000 increase in pricing, a $200,000 price increase from when you bought it to when it gets built, the $6,000 is just the cost of business. The assignment allows you to flip the paper. Did you want to add anything to that? No, that's great. Yeah. Awesome. I- Look, I, again, I'm Jazz, you know, I'm a big fan of holding on to property. Yes. I, I think that, yeah. you know, if you're buying with the long term in mind, you're good. If you're buying with the intention of assigning, 
I always speculating and, 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 yeah. and sometimes you can go to Niagara and choose black or red and you might have a better, you know, shot at it. Right. But people do it and people have made millions of dollars, but I like what you're talking about when you go buy and hold, right? Because if you, look, this investment, in my opinion, this strategy, it's it, it's one of the most boring investments around. Yeah. I'm not going to like, you know what I mean? Like spill back yeah. curtains here, right? It's one of the most boring investments. It's like watching paint dry, watching grass grow, right? Like there's not much to do. You put your 5% down, you write a check and you wait for 28 months for the building to get built, right? Now, kind of taking this from one of the best investors of all time, definitely in the last you know 60 years, Warren Buffett, who says, I want to keep my investments boring, but my lifestyle exciting. So you want to get into something that's, you know, a little bit more uh, uh, sexier, for example, or where you got to get your hands dirty, then you got to look at buying and flipping, wholesaling. There's there's buying and renoing, but the buy and hold through pre-construction is, is, let's not get it twisted. It is very boring, but very lucrative at the same time. Yeah. So I, I just try to advise my, my, my investors to, to buy with the intention of holding. If assigning it, Makes sense at the time, go for it, but plan to close. That's all I got to say. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we, we, we can definitely give you an easy example on that and transfer tax. Let's take that purchase price of the one bedroom <clears throat> plus den at the 573 square feet at 516,990. So if someone's looking at a purchase price of 560, 516,990 and they're not a first time home buyer, the land transfer tax, which is paid at closing. So don't keep that in mind. That's not paid now. It's paid at closing in this for this opportunity. It's going to be close to uh, 28 months from now. What's the actual cost on that? So I'm going to give you a parking spot as well. Parking oh, and locker. Nice. Did you give them the combo? I gave them the combo. So, okay. That's the fries with it. Yeah. Got so, it. so uh, let's use easy math for fi- at 550. Let's say 550,000 land transfer tax for a second time. Like not your first time. It's, it's not your first home is $7,475. $7,475. If you're a first time home buyer, you get, uh, so if it's your first time buying a property, uh, you would be entitled to a $4,000 rebate. It would be $3,475 if it's your first time buying a property. And if you guys have not yet gotten in touch with Anthony and the team, make sure to send that email to Anthony at anthonytabar.com to get on a call with himself or someone on the team to answer those specific questions. This is something that we do. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you anything to purchase with the team. It doesn't cost you anything to just ask questions. This is how you, whoever's watching right now as a first time investor, first time buyer, an investor who's looking at their hundredth property, but maybe you didn't go buy, you didn't do it the right way. This is going to be your opportunity to get the informed information so you can make a quality decision. Don't be scared to reach out by email, by phone. I think we put Anthony's direct line in there. Don't call him right now. As he said, yeah. call him later on. He will make sure that he or him, someone from his team actually reaches out. Was there anything else in the Q and a that we might've missed Nikki? That is, that is everything guys, gals. There's a little over a hundred people. In fact, I think it was a little over 113 people was my last count that got registered for this event. I want to thank you personally for your time. You could have been anywhere else today, but you chose to be with us. A, B, because there was a little over 113 people, we don't have that many units to go around, but we're more than happy to sit down and talk with everybody if to talk through if this might be the opportunity or it might be something else. However, to get your reservation suite registered and time stamped. Make sure to go to anthonytabar.com. Get all the information. Do it over dinner. Do it over a glass of vino. Whatever you choose to do it, but do it tonight. Because again, a little over 113 people registered. We're probably looking at getting 10 to 12 units. We want to make sure that you register through the reservation form, which is at anthonytabar.com. Anthony, I'll let you close it off, brother. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, I probably have spoken to most of you on the phone already. Uh, now you get to put a face to, to my voice. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Jazz said that there's no cost to uh, to call and to email, and that's absolutely true, but I do love McDonald's coffee. So if you ever wanted to treat me one, I'm come by the shops at Don Mills, by Don Mills and Lawrence, or by Here Ontario and uh, Eglinton. Uh, we have an office in Mississauga as well. 
I, I would be lying to you if I told you that this was the last best opportunity. We we have good opportunities that come across our desk all the time. I, I invest. I can't say no to a good opportunity. So stay tuned. We will be in touch and uh, happy investing.